All right, we're going to talk about modulus 6.3, the binomial theorem, Pascal's triangle. So we have this Pascal's triangle. It's a unique thing that we see in science and in life. You can Google it. It's actually very interesting, but you do need to copy this down, and it does continue. Do you notice all the edges are 1, and it increases. So 1, 1, and then it goes 1, 2, 1. The pattern is you add the two numbers above it to get to that middle. So 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 plus 1 is 3, they end in 1s. 1 plus 3 is 4, 3 plus 3 is 6, and so on. We use Pascal's triangle to expand binomials in the form of a plus b to the nth power. Pascal's triangle provides us the coefficients for each term. We're going to have to do some multiplying and simplifying, but it does give us the coefficients. Now, up here, we have this rule. Let's see if I can move the board down so you guys can see the whole rule. And this is the expansion. It looks like a big, crazy mess, and it kind of is, but I'm going to teach you how to use it so it won't be so bad. In short, we're going to use Pascal's triangle for the C values. A values start with N and decrease, so N is your highest power. And B values start with O, 0, and increase to N. The powers increase and decrease only by one unit. So, for example here, we're going to look at expanding x minus 3 to the third power. That means x minus 3 times x minus 3 times x minus 3. So we're going to start with a simple one. Now, we're going to use Pascal's triangle. So this power is a 3, which means we go back to Pascal's triangle, and we're going to look at this line here where it has a 3 on the second number in. That gives me my coefficients. So I'm going to follow these values. So... It's not super difficult, but it does take time. Please take the time. Don't skip steps. If you skip steps, we'll have issues. So our C values, we have, it starts with a 1, and it is times x to the third, because it's the highest power, times negative 2 to the 0. Then we have plus. Our next value in Pascal's is a 3. The x goes down. This is our A value. This is our B value. The negative 2 goes up. Notice 2 plus 1 adds to 3. 3 plus 0 adds to 3. Then we have plus. The next value is a 3. And the x goes down again. So it's x to the first. The negative 2 goes up, so that's squared. And then it ends in a 1. x to the 0 and negative 2 to the third. Now we've got to go back and simplify. So pay attention to your positives and your negatives and your powers. So 1 times x cubed Negative 2 to the 0 is 1. Here we have 3 times x squared times negative 2 plus 3 times x. Negative 2 squared is 4. And then x to the 0 power is just 1. Negative 2 to the 3rd is negative 8. I'm going to go simplify. 1 times 1 times x cubed is x cubed. We have 3 times negative 2. That's negative 6x squared. Then I have 3 times 4. That's a positive 12x, and then plus 1 times 1 times negative 8 is a minus 8. And here it is expanded. Now, let's try it with a, another one. Here, we've got x plus y to the 7th power. That's a big one. The little ones, they're, they're not so bad. The big ones, they can be a little tricky. So we have to go to Pascal's triangle that has a 7 in there. So that's a 1, 7, 21, 35, 35, 21, 7, and 1. We can figure out any line on Pascal's triangle by doing the line above it. So here we go. This is 1 times x to the 7th, because a starts with the highest power, y to the 0. Then we have plus. It goes to 7x to the 6th, y goes up by 1, plus 21x to the 5th, y squared, then it goes to the next one, 35. X is going down. Y is going up, but the two powers add to 7. Plus 35. Plus 35 again. X cubed. Y to the fourth. Plus 21. X, whoops, made my X a little too long. Squared. Y to the fifth. Plus 7. X to the first. Y to the sixth. Plus 1. X to the zero. Y to the seventh. Go back and simplify. So that's just x to the 7th, because y to the 0 is 1, plus 7x to the 6th y, plus 21x to the 5th y squared, plus 35x to the 4th y cubed, plus 35x cubed y to the 4th, plus 21x squared y to the 5th, plus 7x y to the 6th, plus y to the 7th. And we've expanded it. 
All right, we learned to solve real life problems using binomial probability. So this is our form that we're going to use. P is the probability of success. Q is the probability of failure. Failure and success have to add to one whole. So if it's 80% success, it be 20% failure. If it's 40% success, it would be 60 cents. 60% failure. So we're going to now look at this problem over here and hopefully get it done before the video shuts off on us. One in five boats traveling down a river bypass the harbor at the mouth of the river and head out to sea. Currently, four boats are, boats are traveling down the river and approaching the mouth of the river. What is the probability that exactly two of the boats head out to sea? So we need to actually sit down and compute this. Probability of success. It says one out of five traveling down the that pass the harbor at the mouth of the river and head out to sea. So probability of success is one out of five. They give it to us up here. Probability of failure is four out of five. So changing this to a decimal, that's 0.2, that's 0 0.8. It just makes things a little easier to deal with. Now, we have only four boats. We want to know how many two exactly will be successful. So we say the probability of two boats being successful is the combination of four things two times at 2.2 to the second power times 0.8 to the 4 minus 2. From here, we are going to simplify. Now, off to the side over here, I want to show you what the combination of 4 and 2 looks like. That is 4 factorial divided by 2 factorial times 4 minus 2 factorial. These two values have to add to this top number. So 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 divided by 2 times 1 times 2 times 1. A factorial just means that number times itself all the, or times each number below it till you get to 1. You can cancel out common factors. That's 12 over 2, which gives us 6. So that's 6 times 0 0.04 times 0 0.64. Multiply it all out and we get... 0 0.1536 is our probability. Now, next one we have is the probability of at least two. So that means we want the probability of at least two. That means three or four. So the probability of three plus the probability of four. So the probability of three, that's four things three times. 0 0.2 to the third times 0 0.8 to the first. These two have to add the four. This is how many you want. This is what is left. Four things, four ways, probability of success at four times, and the probability of failure at zero. So, doing our factorials, which we can talk more about, this gives us four times 0 0.008 times 0 0.8 plus one times 0 0.0016 times one. When you multiply these out, we get 0 0.0256 plus 0 0.0016 for a grand total of 0 0.1808. We are going to practice more of these in class. I know it went kind of quick. And these combination things you may not quite get. I am going to talk to you more about that tomorrow. Hopefully you've seen it before, but I can't guarantee it.